Oh no, not again. What's with this water pressure? And this time it's both hot and cold. Uh, oh no. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it can be a little bit challenging to live amazing when you don't have water pressure, particularly in the kitchen when you're trying to wash dishes. Yeah, my favorite thing to do around here. You know, it really is. I mean, I can't believe how you really like to wash dishes. I do. It's, it's very, for whatever reason, it's very relaxing for me. There are actually times where he will go to wash the pan before he sits down to eat. <laughs> right? So he cooked yeah. steak the other night and he had to wash that frying pan before we could sit down yeah. and eat. You know, yeah. While I, the steaks were resting. I take care of my cast. <laughs> but this video is about low water pressure. Now, if you're a long time viewer, you probably remember we did a video where we didn't have hot water pressure. Now, today's problem is a little different. It's a little interesting because we have good pressure all throughout the house in the shower and the bathroom, but not in the kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen faucet is just dribbling out. You can't do anything with it. And this information will help you no matter what kind of camper you have. Now, we happen to have a Grand Design 310 GK fifth wheel. So 2020, we've had it for about seven months. But this kind of hands-on stuff, you pretty much have to do if you're camping full-time or even for the weekends. You pretty much have to be a hands-on person. Yeah, and, and I'm not a plumber. I never worked as a plumber. I did some basic plumbing around my house when I had my sticks and bricks house. Yeah, I don't claim to be an expert here, but this is really not that intimidating. We're gonna take you through step by step because it's a little bit of a mystery, but we'll break it down and show you, you know, how to solve this. So just kind of sit back as we show you the different things that we tried. All right, so the first thing we did was what? We we went to the bathroom and we saw that we had good water out of the faucet and out yeah, of the shower. Yeah, so that told me that we had good house supply. There was no problem at the faucet outside the supply line. and. It's getting through the Nautilus and all that without any restrictions. Yeah, and the Nautilus is our water diverter system and different campers have different systems. Some have no system. We thought, well, you know, if you're in a house, you know, there's like that screen or that end of the faucet that sometimes gets skunked up. And ours does not come apart, but we soaked it in vinegar. Right. Mm -hmm. The very first thing we tried and what was the result of that? No change. <laughs> no change. So then we thought, now if you've watched our recent video, you know that we had an issue with the island and the island collapsed. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we thought that when we put that back together that... I thought there was a possibility that one of the lines got uh, smashed. I took the floor panel out of the island to check the hoses, check the PEX lines. And, and what did you find out? They were fine. Yeah. <laughs> they were fine. So they check that one off the list. Yeah. So the next thing that we did was we looked at the dishwasher supply line. Yeah, since I was in there, the, the hose that they put in, if you if you get the dishwasher um, option in this thing. Which we don't have. We don't have. But, but This is my dishwasher. But, <laughs> but the uh, hose is there, so I figured, well, let's see what kind of pressure we have at the hose. So I took the plug they they put in the end and turned the valve on, and, and, uh, and of course we had shut the water off outside already. Um, That's key. Yeah, you don't want to do this with, with the water on outside. You want to make sure the water's off and, and, and you've cleared the pressure in the line, open a faucet in the bathroom or open the faucet in the sink uh, to, to get rid of all the, the residual pressure in the lines. And then you turn it back on outside. Then you send somebody outside while the other person's in here and with a bucket, with that hose in the bucket, and uh, you turn the water back on and see what kind of pressure you have. And we had really good pressure from the dishwasher line. So the next step was to actually pull the hose out that goes up into the faucet. Yeah, right? the supply lines to the faucet. There's, of course, a hot and a cold. And uh, we took those off and did basically the same thing. Okay, turn it off, turn it off. And that was like a fire hose. I mean, that was some serious pressure there. I didn't see it, but <laughs> I got soaked. I by saw it. the results when I came back in. <laughs> we soaked underneath there. So then, uh, so you decided to go ahead and take the faucet apart because it had to be somewhere, somewhere in the faucet. There's some kind of blockage or restriction or something. Yeah, given what we had found with the hot water problem that we had early on, 
I kind of expected to find a chunk or chunks of this of this li uh, lime deposit that yeah. in the in the system somewhere. Would that be enough to restrict it? That's what this is, is a restrictor. Oh yeah. So you can just take the whole thing out. So this is a restrictor. Pretty sure. That's what it looks like to me. It's kind of cloggy. Huh? And it's clogged. It is? Look. Is there, oh, Jesus, yeah. There's the problem. And it turns out there's this, like, uh, restrictor thing. Yeah. That was gunked up. Yeah. I'm surprised any water was getting through it. Yeah. I mean, you, you could, <laughs> all you saw was white when you looked down in there. And so we scraped all of that out and, and uh, put it back together. So does every faucet have like a, a somewhere in the line it has a restrictor Usu not just on the end in the line usually too. there's a restrictor in the line somewhere I mean, like i said i'm not a plumber so i don't know i can't say 100 percent of the time if you've got a low water restriction and, and you've cleaned your nozzle as best you can and it's still a problem then you have to start looking downstream for the restriction and, and that's a good place to look so if you are new to rv life know that water pressure is a pretty common problem and you know there are talks about <laughs> how do you take a good shower in your rv because it can be hard to find good water pressure some of the showers that automatically come with the rv are low water pressure and just depending on which campground you go to it can be an issue and water pressure that's too high can also be an issue as that can damage the lines inside your rv that's why we recommend you get a good water pressure regulator there are cheaper ones than this but we have found them to be inaccurate it's worth it to protect your rig we actually have two whole house filters before the water gets to the nautilus it's going through two filters they do make a sediment filter that you would put even before that so thinking that we need one of those right because that's the other thing with all the travel you never know what kind of quality water you're going to get you never know from different campgrounds and often early in the season there's more likely for sediment if they haven't been running that water for a long time or maybe you get on a campsite that they haven't used for a while you're also more likely to get some sediment I mean, a practice that I do uh, before I hook our hose up is I turn the water on and let it run for a few seconds to clear anything that's that's right out the faucet. I've seen some brown, rusty water oh, yeah. from doing I've that. I've seen some nasty water coming out of faucets. Iron pipes. Yeah. yeah. So tell me what tools that you used for this. And I know you have a really handy tool for getting that gunk out. What's that called? Yeah, just a pick tool. We're gonna to put links in the description. I got this thing 30 years ago and it's it's one of the tools that I hope I never lose. So it's a pick set? Yeah, and you can get various kinds. The, the one I have uh, has one handle with four interchangeable pick styles. They come in various ways. I like the one I have because it's such a compact piece. It doesn't take up a lot of space in the toolbox. So what other tools? Did you use your dikes? I did not use my dikes. <laughs> I, used, I used a pair of channel locks and that's it. And a screwdriver, a, a Phillips head screwdriver. Are there any other tools, if you're going to be working on your plumbing, on your rig, are there any other tools that you really should have on board at all times? Well, if you've got PEX, like, like most new rigs, it's a good idea to have a PEX clamping tool. You can get shark bites, which require no tools at all. You just stick the hose in and and um, and give them a slight tug and they're they're locked in and they're fine they cost quite a bit more than the standard fittings that you get mm -hmm. uh, with PEC systems and and what I have is a clamping tool so that I can still use the the cheaper style fittings and the squeeze clamps there's actually two different types of squeeze clamps talk to your hardware man yeah <laughs> Go to, go to the hardware store and, and, and they, they can show you what you need. Or hardware woman. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm so glad we got that fixed. Yeah, and especially because today's a special day. It's Liz's birthday, her 58th birthday. It sure is. And I am so glad to reach 58 and see that life just keeps getting better and better. And also, I am still younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. See ya.